Assalamu alaikum, my dear friends. You know, the thesis of this channel is that um, people, in fact, specifically the Muslim people, the followers of the religion of Islam, have um, acquired or have adopted many beliefs, uh, many assumptions that have, in fact, um, uncertain or shaky grounds in reality <clears throat> and that um, myself on this channel as with a number of other similar channels we've taken it upon ourselves to do a revision of the things that we believe in that we assume as part of our deen our religion and the way we do that is by testing the support that each and every belief has. Now, the support that every belief or practice should have should be in the Quran, according to our understanding. Yes, we differ with the majority of Muslims who believe that the books of Hadith which cannot really easily be numbered because there are many of them and there are many hadiths in those books and it is a very complex and convoluted um, set of literature that has to be assessed and evaluated. Unlike the Quran, you see the Quran is a book that consists of 6,200 verses. We don't have to decide which verses are strong, which verses are weak. The Quran verses are all divine and we accept them the way they are, unlike hadith. Hadiths, first of all, are many, many more. There are many more hadiths than there are Quran verses. Secondly, the hadith is of untested strength. Some hadiths would be weak, some hadiths would be strong. In recent years, a very popular scholar, uh, Sheikh uh, Al-Albani, came from Europe. Um, was embraced and adopted by the Salafist uh, priesthood in Saudi Arabia, uh, became a mainstream scholar, accepted by them, by the majority of them, and in fact overturned a number of hadiths that had been regarded as hasahih for 1400 years. And so a man came in the 20th, 21st century and overturned hadiths that Muslims acted upon, thought were the words of the Prophet for 1400 years and he overturned those hadiths. And that is why just quickly we, on this channel and in similar channels, we maintain that the real proof, real proof of any belief or practice should come from the Holy Quran. Yes, we can use other means, we can use research, we can use even hadiths, but these, whatever sources have to get proper corroboration, authentication, triangulation, <laughs> if you know what that means. But we need to double check and verify anything else except the Quran. Even, you know, the Quran doesn't even, the Quran itself doesn't even force you to believe it without testing. It actually offers a few um, challenges and tests for you to make sure to, to, to comfort yourself that it is the real book of God. But like I said earlier, the question of this video is not what Muslims believe, what they don't believe, is why people believe what they believe. Why do people, why are people prepared to adopt a bunch of things that, they, that really have no basis. And, and that's not just a question that goes to the Muslim. That's a question that goes to any other, to the Christian as well, and to the follower of, you know, rabbinical Judaism. There's a kernel of truth. There is a original, authentic kernel that has got complete connection to what is true, real, right. And then there is the additional beliefs and the, and the, 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 f the growing, the, the expanding, the elaboration on that truth. 
And that is really what I'm referring to, not those kernels of truth. You see, the kernel of truth in Christianity is the same kernel of truth that is in Islam, and it is the same kernel of truth that is in uh, uh, Judaism, and that is that your Lord God is one, and there is none like unto him. Right? And live a righteous life, do not live a life of excess, be measured, be kind, be compassionate. That is sort of the kernel of truth. And believe me, that is not obvious. You know, Many nations on earth before these three religions came did not believe in being compassionate. They did not believe in being measured, being restrained. And so that is the kernel of truth in all these religions. But where, why do people jump to obey all the elaborated add-ons that have no basis, that have no proofs? And this is my understanding. This is my understanding. My understanding is that people generally operate, are motivated by two things. People are generally motivated by two things. There is a third thing, but let me first say two things. The first thing is greed, and the second is fear. Most people, I'm using those sort of negative ways of putting those terms out there. Agreed is not always negative. So let me let me just say that people are motivated by either obtaining something, acquiring something, being secure, being, you know, being accepted, being, you know, um, having an opportunity to gain favor from people, in other words, acceptance, uh, a stipend, a salary, whatever. That is those that, that I group under the heading greed. And most people will function well if there's sufficient inducements given to them in the form of monetary or other forms of inducements. They want acceptance, they want money, they want a salary, they want a stipend, they want to a life, you know, financial security. And that is the first thing that people are motivated by. But the second one is more powerful than the first one, and that is fear. People are afraid of many, many, many things. They are afraid of losing what they have, first of all, of, of the enemy that wants to take what they have. They are afraid of being judged and condemned by their family, by their friends, by their community. People are afraid of losing their jobs. People are afraid of being injured, getting hurt, being hurt, suffering pain. And these are all the things that people are afraid of. Right? And so those people are afraid of the unknown, you know, of, of, of things that they don't understand, of the monster, of the boogeyman. These are all things that people are afraid of. And those are the two main things that motivate people. Now, you know, Napoleon was once asked. And if you know a little bit about Napoleon Bonaparte, the great French uh, conqueror and uh, leader of the French, when, and he, he fought many wars, I think he fought like 10 or so wars in Europe, conquered half of Europe, almost all of Europe at one stage. And he, he was able to rally the French nation and, and capture the imagination of the French nation, so much so, not only the French, beyond France, so much so that he could, he, he could call up hundreds of thousands of men and he would get those men to volunteer in his army and with those armies he would go and confront some of the most ancient entrenched powers of Europe, including the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the, the British, the Prussian, the Holy Roman Empire. And so in the, in the, in, towards, at the end of the 1700s, in, in the early decade of the 1800s, Napoleon was, only, was able to rally hundreds of thousands of people. In fact, one of his most uh, catastrophic expeditions was the one which he led uh, to Russia, to the Russian Empire, where he tried to get uh, to, you know, to 
get Russia to subdue or to, to submit to his, his will, his wishes. And I believe in the battle against Russia, he was able to rally 400,000 men. Okay, the question is, I'm giving a lesson on Napoleon, which isn't the intention, I'm sorry. But what I want to say is that this is a man who could rally hundreds of thousands. People asked him, I think when he was in his, you know, beyond his conquering years, I think when he was at Elba or at uh, St. Helena, at the island being banished, uh, one of the officials on this island, I think it was in on St. Helena, asked the great emperor, how were you able to rally all those men and send half of them to their death? How were you able to do that? Send so many hundreds of thousands of men to wars and to meet with death. And his answer was, and I don't have an exact source, you can go and look this up. But his answer was that it is, you will be shocked to see how much people will do for pride and a small stipend. You will be shocked to see how much people will do for a little bit of pride and a small stipend. Now <laughs> that my friends, that spells it out for me, that people are prepared to sacrifice themselves. You know why? For, 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 for the feeling that they've done something good, for pride, that they've done something amazing, that they could hold up and, you know, you know sh showcase themselves to people. I'm a brave sh soldier. I'm, I've fought for my country. I'm standing for France, for Liberté, Galité, you know, for, for that little bit of pride. And then secondly, if you can add a small stipend to it, I'll be so happy. And that is really, my friends, what Napoleon says there for me, it strikes such a note, is that people are prepared to do so much for a little bit of recognition and for a small stipend. And when I look at the growth of false beliefs, of fictitious beliefs, of false doctrines within Islam, within Christianity, within Judaism, you see, I see the same mentality. I see these people, these masses of people doing it for what? Out of fear and out of want. And I'm not going to use the word greed. I will say out of fear and out of material want. They don't, they cannot do what I do because if a, if a Mullah and I, if a Mulvi, if a Sheikh goes and says to people that half of your beliefs are not founded in the Quran, then they will lose their income. They will lose the small stipend which they're getting. Plus they will become a marked man, an exile from their community. And so the love of that small stipend, the fear of being exiled, will afflict, will affect, will be relevant to 99,9% of the Molanas and the Shuyuch and whoever you are dealing with. And that's a fact, my friend. I'm not I'm not making this up. I would I would not be so confident if I did not meet these people myself. If I did not, if God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did not give me the direct contact with these people. I was, you see, I know the mind of an owner. They, 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 and yes, they're going to tell me, but Anwar, these people are truly also pious. They, yes, we, we learn because of the greed, because of the want and because of the fear. We learn to love what we do. You know, you can learn to love anything if it gives you dignity, pride and a small stipend. Even, <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, even the prostitute will tell you that, you know what, 
I love doing what I do. And then, because we need to, we need to justify ourselves in our own minds. That's the interesting about human beings. We will always justify ourselves to ourselves. You know, um, there was a war in this town against gangsters in the mid 1990s, um, where a, the Muslim community at the at the helm of it declared war on the drug smugglers and the gangsters who were basically behind all the drug smuggling. And um, one of these famous gangsters, um, he was asked, listen, why do you sell drugs? Why do you put out, you know, executionary notices on people? Why do you put a price on people's heads? Why do you kill people, in other words? And this famous gangster, his name was Rashid Stahi, he, he was killed eventually. His words were, we are the victims of apartheid and we have the right to free ourselves by any means necessary, even by selling drugs. What he was doing was justifying his crimes. And that is what every person does is we all tend to justify whatever we want to do in our own minds. And the only way you can correct yourselves, the only way you can correct a human being who is believing what he wants to believe falsely is to confront him with reality. That's the only way you make a man or a woman escape their brainwashing is to put them in front of reality. Reality is what people require to make them come back down to earth. And that is what we do here. We offer them reality in the sense of offering them the verses of the Quran, making them, what is reality? Reality, another word of reality is rationalism. Right? The word rational comes from the word reality. We, we look at the world around us and we say, but it can't be. What you believe in can't be. Let's say, for example, stoning a woman to death for fornicating. It cannot be. The reality is the Quran does not stipulate that as a punishment. The reality is that that comes from the ancient Jewish tradition. The reality is that it is painful, criminal and cruel. Look at the woman being pelted with rocks. Look at it and see if you want to do that to anyone. If you'd ever want to do that, it doesn't gel with you. And that is... I am here, this video channel, this YouTube channel, and channels like mine are here to give people reality, to confront them with reality, and to, uh, to make them snap out of that dream state that they are in, and to come back to reality. Now, I did say that there were two things, fear and, um, and uh, a, a want or greed. You know, the one that throws a spanner into the works is basically sex. Because sex trumps everything. And I'm just mentioning that, by the way. Because um, if you look at the, the Western world, uh, the average Western youth will tell you that I'm not motivated by fear and I'm not motivated by any hope. Or, because they've, they, they are what you call in a position of nihilism. Nihilism means they've given up on everything. They have no hope. They have no fear. And all that motivates them now is just basically... They love of porn and they love of sex and drugs, which is a similar sort of sensation. It's the psychedelic effect. It's the it's the it's the the momentary sense of release and satisfaction. So the drug culture, the sex culture, is basically the the other one. But that is really not what I'm talking about now because that is already human being in its. In, 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 in the process of self-destructing. Uh, I'm talking about people who are still putting, keeping it together. And that is why I didn't come to that one. So, my friends, that is what I want to say to you. And I've read the Christian scriptures and I've read the Muslim history, the Christian history. And I can tell you without any fear of contradiction that it is the, 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 the craving, the the, the sense of need and want and the, the 
fear in people that motivate them to accept the nonsense that they are fed, the false ideas that they believe in. And um, it will never change until we give them people like us. Or if one day, may Allah prevent this or not allow this, one day when they are faced with a true calamity, that is when they really see the falseness of their beliefs. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.